Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee, of course. Uh, today we're going to start another little project. Uh, I'm not going to try to say how many parts it's going to be because I always get it wrong when I record the introduction anyhow. So, But I don't think it'll be very long. may even be a single part one. Right after I got this mini mill, this is the first mill I got, a little X2D from a little machine shop. One of the first things I built for it or made for it was a fly cutter. I think that's probably a project that uh, uh, most everybody that's got some home home shop equipment has built. This is a little one uses a quarter inch high speed steel uh, tool bit. After getting my Precision Matthews mill, been planning on making one of them, uh, making a fly cutter for it as well. Of course, a much larger one. Uh, just kept being on the on the list of things to do, uh, but just never got around to it. Recently, this old Tony uh, on his YouTube channel made one, and that kind of uh, sparked my interest again. And I've got a little project coming up that's going to require, uh, well, not require, but for a fly cutter will come in good. So I'm going to build one today. I have a little bit larger piece of material. Again, this was the uh, this was the one for the mini mill. I'm starting out with uh, this is two inch diameter material. Uh, starting out with about a three inch piece. I mentioned in my last video on the uh, uh, vices making devices that I come across uh, some of this material right here, and I have no idea what this material is. It machines very good, uh, leaves a nice finish. It's what I made the pedestals for the vices out of. Uh, I got two eight foot pieces of this. Uh, probably used about two foot of one of them so far in just odd and end projects. It's, I think they're uh, boat propeller shafts. Uh, they're obviously not stainless steel. You can see uh, this is pretty rusty. But uh, what I'm going to do is put this in the uh, uh, lathe and face off the end and turn it, enough, turn it down enough to get some of the rust off of, turn around and do the other end, and then we'll actually start working on our piece. I have the piece in the lathe now, and we're going to face off this end and then beat the rust down on approximately half the length of it. Right, both ends of this is going to get uh, turned down a little bit, or at least one end will for the shaft. So that's enough clean up on that. And I'm going to turn it around, go ahead and face the other side. We're going to go about an inch and a half for the shaft and an inch and a half for the body. So I want to face this down, I'm sorry, I want to turn this down to just enough to get rid of the uh, rust, to get a good smooth surface. This will be the body end down here. So I have the Z axis zeroed out on the lathe now. And I'm going to come in an inch and a half. And I'm going to set my uh, carriage stop right there. And this this rust is obviously very hard on a uh, on an insert, so I'm going to take it pretty slow, pretty easy to begin with, and uh, try to get some of this rust knocked off. All right, that's going to take just a couple more passes, and we'll have that cleaned up. 
Okay, that cleaned up everything but one little spot right here on the end. And I'll just make a point that uh, the groove that we cut in for the uh, tool to take that out, it, it left uh, 1.87. So it took about 30 thousandths uh, to, get, to get the rust off of that. Now we'll put just a little uh, chamfer on this edge. Now I'm going to turn the piece around. Uh, of course we've already faced that in. But I'm going to turn this around and turn this shaft down to three quarters of an inch. Uh, for an inch and a half in, we'll we'll bring it down to three quarters of an inch. That is what the uh, R8 collet will be used for. And I'll uh, I'll bring you back when we get a little little closer to the end. I think I said. Uh, required about 30 thousandths to take that down. This piece started out as uh, before any of the rust before I ever got hold of it. It looks like about a two inch piece. It's 1870 now so it took about 130 thousandths, not, not 30 thousandths to get that down to clean which is still plenty big. Now as I say I'm going to take this end down to uh, 750 thousandths, three quarters of an inch. I'll bring you back when we get a little closer. All right, let's see where we are. Should be getting fairly close now. Seven seventy-eight. We're looking seven fifty, so we need twenty-eight more thousandths to go. I'll set a dimension on the uh, the RO for twenty-eight thousandths. All right. We're back down in the slow feed, slower feed now. Bring our DRO down to zero. And while we're right here, we'll we'll clean that shoulder up. I think that looks good now. We'll put our chamfering tool on there, clean those edges up a little bit, and we'll be ready to go to the uh, to the mill. All right, I'm going to buff those edges just a just a little with the file as well. take one more look before we take it out. Seven forty-seven. Okay. So here's our blank now. We'll carry this over, set it up on the uh, mill and start cutting our 10 degree uh, groove in there. I have our piece over in the uh, mill now. I have a V block behind it. Uh, vice good and tight down. Got it set at 10 degrees, 10.1. Uh, that's plenty close enough. Now we're going to mill this, this end right here to a flat at 10 degrees. All right, I'm going to make a few passes on this. Just making a very light pass right now just to be sure everything's going to set still like it should. Okay, again, I'm going to make a couple passes. And I'll bring you back when I get a little closer to having this flattened out.
All right, there's our cut across there, flattened out, and I'm comfortable with with the finish on that. I may drop it down, maybe just a couple thousandths, and clean everything up. All right, I double checked the uh, uh, with the angle cube again to be sure to see if it had moved any, and it had moved about a half a degree. Uh, so I've got it set back on 10 degree now, and I'm just going to make a quick cleanup pass across the whole uh, across the whole surface up here, and I can increase the feed rate. have a good flat surface on there now at 10 degrees to the body. I've run the file across there and knocked some of the big burrs off for now. Primarily on this edge where I'm going to uh, check the or set the, the center off of. Now it's not important that I be on the high spot to set center on here. What is important is that I be on the same plane off center, if I'm off center on one side, need to be the same over here. So I'm just going to simply lock the x-axis down where it is right here. And then that way when I check this side, then I'll raise up, come over here and check this side. All I'm looking for is the center. I'm not interested in the diameter itself. Zero out the Y. I always like to check to be sure it repeats. And it did. And that repeated on that side. So on the DRO, I'll hit Y, one half. And bring the DRO back to zero. All right, that is the center on the y-axis. The biggest thing to watch for when building a fly cutter is that you get the tool on the right side, on the correct side of center. If not, you will have to use a right hand tool and you'll have to run your, your lathe in reverse. I'm using, I'm going to use this one as an example for what I need to do on that. Uh, and actually, before I built this one on the uh, for the mini lathe, <clears throat> I cut one out of uh, Delrin to begin with, just to be sure I had those angles right. If I did this every day, it might be a little bit different. But uh, setting that up there, that tells me I need to go that the cutting edge of my tool is on this side. We want that on the center line, so I need to move the work this way. I've taken the uh, edge finder out and put a 3 8 end mill in there now. Remember it's on center. 
I want this edge of the end mill to be on center. So I need to move over 0.1875. All right, that's within two tenths. So that has got this edge on there. We're going to, we'll move over and widen our, widen our groove up. But for right now, we want to take, make a groove down uh, one half inch. I'm going to zero out the Z axis here. So come back over here. And take just about twenty thousandths to begin with here, just to make a, just to look at it. All right, that one's on our center line. cutting in that direction. So we're going to continue on on the z-axis until we've got uh, until we've gone down a half inch. Okay, I knew that didn't sound quite right. I need to get back in the other gear. And I will continue this process and bring you back when we get a little closer to a half inch. And I'm going to bring it down to 475 now and leave just a little bit on the bottom uh, because we're going to, after we get this completely roughed out, I'm going to come back with a finishing end mill to clean that up. All right, that is a 3 8 inch wide groove. Uh, close to a half inch deep. All right, to get that uh, the remainder of our half inch width, we're going to need to move over again half of the uh, half the distance, uh, half the width of our cutting tool to get to uh, to get to a half inch. So I'm just going to take that in a couple passes at the. And I only want to cut this on conventional milling. Uh. All right, this will be the final pass right here. I'm leaving about 10, 15 thousand to cut with the, uh, to clean up with the finished mill when we put it back in. After we cut this, we're going to move over here and take some of this bulk out as well. I have the tool back at, the Y axis back at zero now, which puts the tool halfway. Uh, or a tool centered on the center line. If we move our DRO to read 0.5, that will leave us, let me get that lock there, that'll leave us three eighths of an inch in here for our three set screws to go in. And I think that'll be plenty sufficient. So. What I'm going to do now is just uh, zero out the DRO again. 
which it was zeroed. Bring this down to approximately a half uh, and take this out. Then I'll put the finished mill in there and bring you back and clean it all up. All right, now I'm going to put the finishing mill in there and we'll come back and start cleaning up all these surfaces. I have a finishing end mill in there now and we'll zero it out and move down to one half inch. Now I'm going to clean up this surface right here and take it to depth. Alright, that should have that completed. Uh, our tool should set down in there. Which it does, I need to clean some burrs out. I'll clean the burrs up and then we'll be ready to set it up and drill our uh, three, three holes here for our grub screws. I have a fly, fly cutter uh, turned into vice now. <clears throat> As you can see, I've got the angle cube sitting on there and got it sitting at zero so that it's uh, perpendicular to the workpiece now. And what I did was mark off three holes in here, one of them in the center, and then the other one about 300 thousandths from each, from the edge. That just, it looked, looked pretty good, so I decided I'd go with that. Now we're going to drill and tap that for quarter 20. Why? Because I've got a good supply of quarter 20 uh, set screws. And I'm just going to line this up with the center drill. Okay, I'll carry this over, put some set screws in there, uh, and put the tool in and get set up, and we'll we'll try this little jewel out and see if she works. I have a tool in the fly cutter now, uh, left hand turning tool. Got it set in there. Let's see. Let's back away a little bit. Come up and let's see. I'm going to set the set it about center. Zero out the the tool. And we're just going to take about a five thousandths cut to begin with. Just to see, that's six and a half thousandths there. 
just to see how it's going to do. And I'll put it in the, uh, let the table feed itself. I'm running at uh, high one at 600 RPMs. that's a good finish on there you can actually tell the difference I don't know whether you can tell it on the camera but you can tell the point right in here where I added the lube in there very pleased with that I think that's going to work well hope you enjoyed this little video and we'll see you next time around